Today I'm painting the future by turning the sun into my air conditioner. We're gonna start with Brandon's cabin because he lives out here full time and if there's anybody that could use relief from the heat, it's him. I keep a temperature sensor here in the cabin and that'll give you some sense of the problem. Back in April, we had a freak heat wave where temperatures outside hit 96.8 Fahrenheit, which is 36 Celsius. My building peaked at around 88 Fahrenheit, which is still pretty good. It's well below the peak temperature, but that is hot enough to make any desert rat uncomfortable. When we're out here working in the summer heat in direct sunlight, it's too much. We cope with it the same way the rest of the world does, which is you take a midday siesta. But if the only place with shade is uncomfortably hot, have you really accomplished much getting out of the sun? I mean, to some extent, but if you like, you gotta hide in the doorway and angle yourself just so because the width of the shadow is that much. You gotta hide in the precious little shade that there is. One of my favorite channels on YouTube is Nighthawk and Light and Ben did an episode on his own radiative cooling paint that he made on his own, which is just wild. Basically this paint could provide passive electricity free air conditioning by sucking heat from its surroundings and hurling it into space as infrared radiation. It's impressive enough that he made the stuff, but the fact that he did it with common materials that other people can replicate, that's pretty impressive. If you haven't watched his channel, I highly recommend it. It's a lot more science-y than dust-ups, but I've learned a ton just from watching him. The paint works in two ways, and one of them is pretty obvious. It's the color white. And these buildings are already painted white for a reason. We want to absorb as little of the sun's energy as we possibly can. These buildings stay below the peak temperatures by reflecting most of the sun's energy. And I think everybody knows this, when you paint with darker colors, you're helping the paint absorb the sun's energy. My understanding is that if you get a generic white paint, it's gonna reflect somewhere around 80% of the sun's energy. But you might remember from science class that radiation is on a spectrum. You have everything from radio waves all the way up to gamma waves. That's actually what allows white paint in general to top out around 80% is that it reflects most of that spectrum. White paint is reflecting the visible light, that's what makes it white, and it's also reflecting some of the near infrared and ultraviolet radiation as well. Radiative cooling paint expands that spectrum so that 95 to 98% of the incoming radiation bounces away. You can think of it as part of the paint's defensive strategy that whatever is coming in, let's reject it. But that's only half the strategy, that's the defense. What's the offense? Well, you're already familiar with the most obvious offensive strategy we can do out here, which would be air conditioning but that is wildly expensive because of this little room right here, which contains thousands and thousands of dollars of off-grid electrical equipment. Inverters, charge controllers, batteries, lots and lots and lots and lots of batteries. And if there's one thing air conditioners love, it's power. They suck power all day long. The ideal solution would be something like in El Paso, where most people run their house on swamp coolers, which work by putting water in a box and evaporating it, and then you blow the cool air all throughout the house. However, that requires water, and that is in short supply in the desert. So what I love about the idea of this paint is that it's a one and done. Maybe once in a blue moon, we need to go sweep the roof or wash the roof so that it has the clearest possible view of the sky. That would be the only maintenance required to cool the building. All objects above absolute zero emit thermal radiation, and that's caused by the movement and the vibrations of particles. The wavelength and the intensity depend on the object's temperature. That's the way this thermal camera works. It's detecting the incoming thermal radiation and showing you the differences in intensity. With radiative cooling paint, the offensive part of the strategy is by being exceptionally good at emitting thermal radiation in a very narrow band. The Earth has an atmospheric window where infrared radiation traveling between 8 and 13 micrometers can travel through the atmosphere with almost no interference. So far we've discussed reflecting the incoming radiation from the sun, but what about the heat that's already in the building? Well, before I show you the process of applying it and testing how well it works, let me show it to you. Just so you have some context, that's where I was standing before, and right now I am on the roof of Brandon's room. The paint that I'm sitting on is actively reflecting the heat from inside the building itself up into space. This is the view that the building has. Big, beautiful sky, and aside from those little clouds, nothing in the middle. 
this building has its own heat. Sometimes it's from running our electronics inside. Sometimes it's from the thermal contact with the ground, the air. There are sources of heat that aren't just the sun, although ultimately the sun is the source of the heat. But these energy sources emitting infrared radiation do go into the building and we want to reject it. So what happens is the, the heat conducts into this radiative cooling paint and then the paint emits that in that 8 to 13 micrometer window so that it goes straight into space. I expect people are going to have a lot of questions like I had, like why don't you paint the side of the building? Well, the reason is that you're using outer space as the heat sink. So look here, I'm gonna bring the camera to level with the upper wall of Brandon's room and we're facing due east. You're about an inch above the roof right now. And what I want you to see is this straight on view. We have mountains in the way. I don't have a view of the sky. So what would happen is the infrared radiation coming off the wall would shoot, hit that mountain and then it's just gonna reflect back. And the point is to use space as the heat sink. We need to see that. Not that. There's value in painting the sides of the buildings, but only in the sense of the defensive strategy, that the sun shines and you're rejecting 95 to 98% of the radiation instead of the 80% that you get with a generic white paint. But you don't get any of the active infrared emissions going into outer space, which is where the cooling comes in. I did briefly consider painting the side of the building as well, but I thought, I mean, the paint doesn't match, so I would love to have the performance, and I'm not especially picky about visuals, but, you know, I do want the paint to match. Every man needs that one pair of jeans. Reliable, comfortable, and built to last. For me, that's the Slim Mercer from Mott & Bow. These are not your throwaway jeans. They're made with over 40 years of denim craftsmanship. Soft twill, 20% stretch, and still somehow sharp enough to wear out without looking like you just walked off a job site. I wear mine around camp, driving long distances, even out to dinner. They breathe, they move, and they hold up better than anything else I own. They fit right the first time. No tailoring, no weird break-in period. Just a clean, tailored look that's easy to wear all day long. And the best part is that they feel like $200 jeans, but they're not. Go check out Mott & Bow at mottandbow.com forward slash dustups. You're going to save an automatic 20% on checkout. That happens automatically. Again, it's mottandbow.com forward slash dustups. Thank you so much for supporting my sponsors because without them, this project ain't happening. Originally, I thought I'd follow Ben's recipe from Nighthawk and Light, but I got stuff going on and I don't need to do this repeatedly. Is that really a skill set I need to build how to build radiative cooling paint? So I started looking around for commercial producers. It's hard to find, but I did find one and I want to essentially do a product review. I'll put a link in the description, but I want you to know I was not paid a thing for this review. This is just a, how does it work in my situation? I just wanna show you how it performs in my experience using the paint. Now that you know how it works, let's slap on a coat of radio, not radioactive, radiative cooling paint. The paint itself is extremely thick and I don't have a paint mixer. But what I do have is the need to run my bulldozer for about half a day today. Let's go make some paint. After about two and a half hours on the dozer, I have a hard time believing that paint is not fully agitated because uh, I know my body feels like it's been shaken in half. The sales rep said that it's a good idea to use a paint sprayer. I don't know why I'm wearing a hat in here. It would work even with uh, a paintbrush, but because the paint is so thick, it'll look painted on, which it's a roof, I could care less, but he said also it'll go 10 times faster if you spray it. I have very limited time out here, so it's worth the investment in a paint sprayer to get this done efficiently. And what I really sincerely hope is that while this is so successful, it makes sense to do the other buildings. Not a fan of piles, but it makes my work area much cleaner and organized so I can think straight. 25 foot high pressure hose, airless spray gun, the nozzle guard. That's good. I don't know how much water I need. That was not at all effective.
but it's the paint. Very nicely packaged. I planned to wear a respirator anyway, but it says you should wear a respirator, so I'm gonna. And goggles. Just to make sure. It's supposed to be non-toxic, but I also just don't want paint on my hands. This table is so bright, even with these goggles on. There we go. 330 dollars, you better not spill it. Now, this is set to prime. I'm gonna turn on the machine, spray into the waste bucket until I see paint. I will rotate this to spray and climb up there and get going. Here comes the noise. Well, that was horrendously stressful, and it's my first time using an airless paint sprayer. Uh, nobody's in danger of hiring me to paint anything. That was awful, but hopefully it does the job. I mean, I literally just barely got any coverage on the roof because I were wasted so much figuring out how to work the sprayer in the first place. I mean, I knew it wasn't that hard, but you know, I probably wasted $70 out of the 330 just priming too long and doing dumb stuff. But look, since this is a water-based paint, it ought to dry in a raging hurry, but I'm not sure what you see on camera. I have a feeling it's gonna be crazy splotchy. Well, it is crazy splotchy, I can see it. But uh, hopefully it's enough to do the trick. I hoped to have extra, but boy, was that naive. There is one fun little thing I wanna do with uh, because I'm in kindergarten, I want to finger paint. If you're impressed by my art, I am available for commissions. Anyway, let's go see. A, let's go see if the paint's dry. Come on with me. Okay, this was literally the last thing I painted. It's really dry. I had Brandon. Uh, not pressure wash, but spray his roof and make sure that we got as much of the dirt off as possible. And it feels like I got a good contact. I can feel it. Although it would be better if I could spray this on super thick, but you know, it's also really expensive. Let's go get the thermal camera and see if this worked or not. We'll start with what the paint's doing. Wow, okay, this says 83 degrees. And uh, we'll put that in Celsius on the screen. I mean, it's definitely splotchy paint. And you can see the spots where I painted, but let's look at the neighboring building. So, well, that's probably not a fair comparison. We'll look at the kitchen. It says that the roof is 109 over, this, that's the kitchen, 110 on the roof. And this is 92. I think that's gonna help keep the buildings cool. The surface temperature of the neighboring building is 110. The surface temperature of this one, it's 83. Let's go up on the kitchen and see what the actual temperature is, because I know these numbers are wrong, but we know it's gonna be a lot higher. This is 
is really the big test. What is it? Whoa! Wow! So over on that building, it was 83 degrees, and the surface temperature on this building is 112. And I should tell you guys the ambient air temperature, but the surface temperature of the roof has cooled 29 degrees. An enormous difference. Ambient air temperature, 79. 70, 68, 66. 82, 78, So as I've been reflecting on the performance, I have to wait until it's hot. I hope that I can have Brandon climb up there and let you guys see how it's actually performing in the situation where we need it. It's 70 degrees out here and with pretty high humidity today, nobody's complaining about the weather. It's perfect. And for this to happen in May and our peak heat hits in June, I'm not gonna complain about the paint working right now because I don't need it to work in this condition. All right, this is my roof. This is my ceiling, same time. Kitchen ceiling, or roof, I guess. Kitchen roof, quite a difference, my goodness. Right in my shadow. Kitchen ceiling. Not too much inside difference yet at this time of the day. And I think most people rightfully wonder, why don't you just build a roof? Well, a roof isn't gonna bring you below ambient temperature. And the second is that I have all of these oil field pipes that we've started welding. And eventually we'll put purlins up above these buildings and level everything. And then I should be able to have a second story with 1200 square feet of space. And of course, this would be completely in shade and the buildings providing the structure up above would be in shade all the time. And that would cause my ra radi <laughs> radiative cooling paint to no longer work because it wouldn't have a view of outer space. We will get there one day because I need the space more than I need cool paint on my buildings, but I've got a desert forest to build and adding the second story is gonna be fairly expensive. We're doing it on a budget. I think we can do it very affordably, but it's not the top priority. If you have a cooling idea for my specific setup that you'd like me to try, leave a comment. I'm always looking for ideas because it's about to be real hot and uh, anything I can do to stay comfortable out here is a big win.